What's up, everybody? Celtic Scarecrow here, back with another video to get those tens and twenty views. Uh, yeah, I'm doing a, a bunch of videos, actually during the Panthers game because the Panthers' offense is so lackluster. I'm going to do work, as much as you want to call this work, is me reacting to videos more horror Halloween based videos, as you saw last night. The Merkins, very talented. Today we're going to another very talented, something I've seen thanks to the Matthews family. I'll think that's a page. I haven't watched much of his stuff lately, but he was one I watched and he kind of introduced me to this page and that is Mr. Nightmare. Guy who specializes in spooky stories or like true stories, but because there is a Hurricane Ian's remnants is blowing through the haunted forest of South Jersey as we speak. I will be reacting to three true thunderstorm horror stories. Don't forget to do the things. Bolin, do the thing. What thing? The thing! I never had to tell Julie what thing. I'm not Julie, okay? Pretend I don't know anything about anything that's happening here. Like if you like this video. Subscribe if you seem to like me. Uh, share this video. Help grow my channel. I want to hit 50. Whatever that is. I'll also do this to the Mr. Nightmare channel. Because I'm benefiting from them. And hopefully they're nice and don't try to hit me with a copyright claim. Hopefully not. Uh, if you do dislike this video, I will slightly hold it against you. But also comment what you think of these videos. But enough of that. The boring Carolina. If you see me react, because I am watching the Panthers game, it's currently 10-10 with roughly... Ooh, I'm not sure if he caught that. Uh, seven minutes to go in the game. Seven minutes to go in the third, so if you guys are wondering the time frame I'm watching. Yeah, I'm not Tom Grassi. I'm not going to do play-by-play -play live, because I was shocked this game was actually on my TV. Probably because the Eagles played an AFC team. But enough of me talking. Let's get to Mr. Nightmare. Oh, com common theme of like, or just people making simple, subtle mistakes that could end up costing them their lives. This video is sponsored by Raycon. Raycon is a wireless audio brand. That uh, I'm going to mute him because he, he might be getting sponsored by Raycon, but I am not. So we'll just mute the advertisement and let's see up. Uh, What's going on in the game? Baker drops back the throw. Looks plenty of time. And of course, it's bad at the line because Baker's a midget. You know, that line is giving Baker time to throw. And he's throwing it right into the skulls of the defenseman. This is a long ad. Yeah, it's like I would want to hear the stat on how many passes were knocked down at the line of scrimmage that Baker has thrown. I bet he's closing in on 30. Oh, how long is this ad? Okay. Get to the actual stories. Mr. Nightmare. Oh yeah, he like more finds the stories, adds the little like uh maybe like the background and reads them, I think. And Baker escapes, flips to McCaffrey, who gets taken down nowhere near the line of game. Oh the heartbeat. I need to I'll make, get the heartbeat. I've always loved thunderstorms ever since I was a kid, and so does my six-year-old son. Anytime there's a storm, my son and I will sit in the backyard under the gazebo and just watch and listen. This was on a hot, stormy August night in Florida. Florida! Uh-oh, we might have a Florida man story. As soon as we heard the first strike of lightning in the living room, my son jumped up and said, let's go sit outside. I followed him outside, where we ran from the back door to the gazebo, getting pretty wet on the way. It was already pouring. I have a nice setup under my backyard. Fake punt! Fake punt! Not a terrible pass, but it's a completion. We had a fake punt in Carolina. There's a flag on the play, though. Oh, God, no, there's a flag on the play. Hacker threw the ball to Franklin Jr. We had a fake punt. What's the flag? Oh no, Hecker's running back on the field. I 
Um, Yard that was my now, Phil. It has a mini bar, a few wicker sofas, a TV, and mini fire pit. As we usually would. That's a fancy setup there. I turned on the fire pit and TV, and my son and I just laid back and relaxed, listening to the sound of the pouring rain and constant thunder. The thunder would get louder and louder as we sat out there, and the time between the flashes of lightning and cracks of thunder was getting shorter and shorter. The bulk of the storm was getting closer to us. The lightning was getting so bright and frequent that it was genuinely starting to light up the entire backyard any time it flashed. And my my fear began that Zebo getting again, struck by lightning, and Caroline didn't go for a second fake punt. Cowards! Backyard is big, with woods covering two edges of it. Perhaps after the biggest flash of lightning yet, my son squealed and pointed out towards the backyard. What? I said. To which he said he saw someone standing in the backyard. I stood up and walked to the edge of the gazebo. Florida man! I couldn't see anything in the dark, so I was waiting for another flash of lightning. The next few flashes of lightning were too small to fully see into the yard, but when the next earth-rumbling flash of lightning struck, I saw what he meant. There was someone indeed standing out in my backyard by the woods. I told my son to go rush inside and turn on the backyard lights. He did so without question, and I Good kid. stood in place waiting. About ten seconds later, all the backyard lights were on, but I didn't see the person way out in my backyard anymore. I waited for more lightning to maybe help see. But even with the lightning, I didn't see them anymore. They were gone. This is when you go inside the house and get your gun. You live in Florida, you're like Texas, you have a gun. He, she, whatever, I didn't know. All I knew was that there was someone walking around my yard and that didn't sit right with me. I went inside the house and locked all the doors, but kept the backyard lights on. Smart, smart, I also would have checked the windows. I even turned on the front yard lights too. I didn't want to tell my wife, but my son had already done so anyway. So when she was all concerned and asking if we should phone the police, I lied to her and told her I saw the person out there leave. She asked if it was a man or woman, to which I replied woman, as it sounded less scary. For the rest of the night, the three of us watched a movie in the living room, with the storm still overhead. Eventually it was my son's bedtime, so my wife tucked him in and then came back to the living room, and we started watching something else. Yeah. Yeah, that I've been doing routine checks around the house. You know, just to double check every inch. We still heard the thunder outside. Eventually, I went back to the den to turn off the outside lights, front and backyard. When I went up to the living room, my son was standing at his bedroom door, scared, saying there's someone at his window. My wife and I looked at each other and yelled, what? I pulled him away from his doorway. And then I stood at the doorway, looking at the window, waiting for the lightning. When the lightning struck, no one was at his window, but I believed him. Someone Good instincts. Good instincts right there. Was out there. That much was already established. I told my wife and child to stay inside while I go out and look. Ah, that's dumb, dumb. Dumb. Don't go out there. Even though my wife didn't want me to do that. I grabbed a baseball bat from the closet and stormed out into the rain after turning all the lights back on. I started in the front of the house, then worked. Yeah, see, so he can get in that door now. My way to the side, then the back. I looked under the tables and the gazebo, under the deck, and when I thought the backyard was clear, the last side to check was the right side of the house. I would begin to walk towards the side of the house and instantly saw a person in a hood, but I only saw half of their face and head. They were peering around the corner of the house. Most of their face and all of their body was hidden behind the wall. If I had to guess, I'd say it looked more like a man. I screamed. Yeah, 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 probably. But I also ran in that direction with a bat raised up. The person disappeared behind the corner. When I made it past that corner, they were gone. Even with all the lights on, I didn't see anyone there. I went back inside and told the two of them that it was okay, that I chased the man away. Call the cops. But my wife did not like to hear that it was a man. I made sure to close all the blinds in the house now. Luckily, we weren't bothered again by that man. My son slept in our bed with us that night just because he was so scared, and I understand why. I didn't see it, but I can only imagine how scarring it was to see a man standing at his window at the young age of six. This is why you needed a firearm. Yeah, situation like that. Oh, let me go be the hero. No. Call the cops. Let them do their job. And stay with your wife and kid.
All right, story two. The city in which I live almost never gets any rainfall, so when we do, it's a pretty exciting thing. Where are you, like Arizona? I feel a sneeze coming on too. The kids like to go out and play around. <laughs> Told you, felt it come. The farmers are thankful that their crops will thrive, and it's just a nice piece of scenery. The last time there was a big thunderstorm, my friends and I were all playing some game together, though I can't remember which one it was. I knew the thunderstorm was rolling in when everybody's microphone played the same sound of the first thunder, and it was big. When I heard Oh, that means you guys all live in the rough same area. Heard it, I thought it was a gunshot or firework. Then I saw the lightning outside my window, and hopped over to my bed to see the storm forming. What I saw was much more unsettling. Across the street from me was a man. He wore a gray hoodie and some jeans. He looked fairly tall. Oh, God, no. They, unless you're in, like, a rural area, that's... Man. Oh, not too muscular, and he was just standing there. I couldn't tell if he was looking at me or not, as his face was obscured. Then he started to walk down the street, so he wasn't looking at me. I felt relieved, yet still a bit paranoid. I paranoia is good. Trust your paranoia in situations like this. Got back on the game with my friends, and we continued to play. About yeah, I would have done a security check. Walked to the living room, locked the door, told my mom, saw something creepy looking in our house, click, make sure the windows are shut. Fifteen minutes later, the storm had fully started. I told the four of them I was leaving to go watch the storm, and I'd be back in a while. I walked out front and stood under the porch, watching as the lightning flashed and the rain struck the ground in a soothing rhythm. See, I would have done the same, but I would have brought something with me. Then I looked down the street. Uh, now hold on, I'll literally show you what I would bring with me. I have, of course this is right beside my bed, this. Granted, I know I keep saying get a gun, get a gun. I don't have one. Jersey's kind of weirdly strict with guns, and I just haven't got around to uh, applying. Street to my left, and there he was, the man standing at the corner of the street. I was scared a bit, but I still had my head trying to reason this out. It's not uncommon for townspeople to stand out in the rain. JC's smart. You're, you're cautious. You're not overreacting. This is so far good. But I see this is not even halfway through the story, so I'm concerned. It is a rare occurrence, after all. So I paid little attention to it. Yeah, there's, er, there's the first, first error. After about five more minutes, I decided to go back inside. And as I opened the door, I turned to where the man had stood. He was gone now, which made for a more eerie scene. I walked inside, where two of my little siblings were dancing to a Bubble Guppy song. My hey, what? My other two siblings were in their rooms, doing who knows what. I went back to my room, but instead of playing the game again, I decided to go do something else. Though I didn't know what to do. Then I heard the all-too-familiar buzzing of my phone when I received a text. I picked it up and opened the messenger. It was an unknown number. They had sent me two texts. The first read, Have you forgotten? And the next read, I know you didn't. My first thoughts were the man that I had seen outside. But then I thought of how slim those chances were. Yeah. How would he have gotten my number? Why would he target me for whatever he was trying to do? I decided my friends were pulling a prank on me and decided to check. I went to the group chat and asked if anyone had been prank texting me. They all swore that they weren't. Though it's hard to tell over text if they were lying, I decided to believe them and went to watch TV. So you you notice the creepy guy, you get two weird texts, and your instinct was to go watch TV. Right. Some time had passed. How long exactly I don't remember. When there came a ring at the door, it was way too late for visitors. So who could this be? Maybe the postal service. Uh, way too late for visitors. Why would the Postal Service be showing up? And two, don't open the door. I checked the time on my phone. 12.19. Definitely too late for visitors. But the Postal Service. I peered through my blinds in an effort to see who it was, but I couldn't. The rain was coming down so hard it was like a blanket of mist was everywhere. Then one of the gunshot thunders sounded. My head slammed into the window, making a thud sound. There was movement by the door. It was a person running off. I could only assume it was the man from earlier. Uh, hopefully that was thunder. No, 
I knew it was the man from earlier. How could these events not all add up? I wanted to call the cops, but I had no proof the man had been there. I still would have called. He just left without a trace. I decided to try and sleep and got about three. Yeah, there's this creepy guy stalking me. Um, sound like I'm underage. And my instincts are telling me not to call the cops, but to go to bed. The police do have a non-emergency number. So look that up, call them, saying, Hey, I'm a little nervous because I keep seeing this creepy guy and I have gotten creepy texts and someone showed up to my house at you no know, midnight. Can you at least do a drive-by to see, make sure there's no one suspicious in the area? Three hours worth. When a gunshot thunder woke me up, I shot up, then froze. Then I relaxed a little when another loud bang sounded. But this one wasn't thunder. This one came from my window. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't let whoever was out there know I was awake. You slowly roll off your bed and get to the hallway. But what if they knew? I decided to just take a peek through my blinds. Dumbass. What I saw next was probably the scariest thing I'd ever seen. It was the man with his hands pressed against the window, and I could only assume he was staring at me. The scariest part was his mouth. His eyes were mainly covered in shadow, but there was enough light to see his mouth, and it was smiling. It was such a big, maniacal smile I didn't even know it was possible for a human to make. Then he stood and left. Just like that, he walked into the rainy night from which he came. I sat awake in my chair, but I guess I fell asleep somewhere along the road. Still never call the cops. When I woke, I was confused as to why I was in my chair. Then I remembered the previous night's events, and I darted to the window for whatever reason. When I pulled the blinds up, there was one thing I could see. A small piece of paper taped to my window. On it were three words that have now haunted my dreams. Have you forgotten? I haven't had any further experience with the man, and I hope I don't have to. Our, our commercial. I'm going to mute it and then... You know, if your instincts are telling you to call the cops, call them. You know, just let them just do a quick scan of the area. Like, oh, you're just asking to be murdered. Like, my parents watch enough of those ID channels that... the heck was that? They actually look pretty cool. Oh, yeah, I heard their EA was making a Monster Hunter-style game, so... Probably be a short game with more add-ons, but yeah, if you're interested, say call the cops. Like I said, they do have a non-emergency number. It was a night I was working late. The weather outside was awful, and I was just leaving my job to go home. It was about 12 a.m. during a thunderstorm. I used to drive a 2005 Ford Fusion, a little car not ideal for crappy weather and roads. Eh, says your tires. I was taking my usual route home. And the rain was so bad that even having the windshield wipers on the highest setting didn't help that much. I still could barely see. I was going 40 miles per hour on a 55 mile per hour road. That yeah, probably should have dropped that thing down to 30. That's how bad it was. There were no other cars around me. And when I least expected it, through the water building up too quickly for my wipers to handle, thus partially blocking my view, I saw someone dressed in white running across the road from one side of the woods to the other. I saw them almost too late. I had to slam on the brakes and swerve to avoid hitting them. I swerved and lost control onto the grass before crashing head-on into a tree. Unfortunately, my evil body would have been like, nope, The sorry. airbag deployed and my whole body jerked forward into it. I couldn't even believe what just happened at first. Oh, it's by a Nicole. So it's a girl, so a lot more sympathetic. Me? I was in shock. I knew immediately my car was totaled, but when I slowly started to accept what just happened, I started... Ooh, it looks like there might be a mini fight going on. Oh, let me remove the headphones. Now, let's go back to the story. I'll let you know what happened. Oh, hold on. Here we go. Replay. Lulu was tackling. Uh, Lulu kind of slammed the guy. I to look around my car for the person that just ran across the road randomly. 
I was currently in the middle of a quiet highway with no buildings nearby for miles and no cars to be seen. Ideal place for a horror movie. There should have been no one walking around here, especially in this weather this late. It was a work night and extremely late, so I was nervous. Your definition of a work night might be different than most people. Like, my days off aren't the weekends. Nobody would pick up. The first person I called was my brother, who didn't pick up after several attempts. He was definitely asleep. I tried my sister next, with equal results. I didn't want to have to involve either of my parents in this, but with no other... Guys, you totaled your car. Dad won't be pissed because some whack job ran in front of you. Option. I called my dad on his house phone, which was sure to wake him up. He picked up on the last ring, and I explained the situation. I told him I'd need assistance, and didn't know what number to call for a tow. After ensuring that I was okay and that I had no injuries, he gave me the number for our family's roadside assistance company to call. He said he'd get dressed and drive over to me. His house was about 10 to 15 minutes away. My dad also told me to get out of the car to look for whoever was crossing the street. What? No! No! No. Bad advice, Dad. Lock the doors. Deflate the airbag, lock the doors. You do not know what kind of whack job is out there. To keep my doors locked. When we hung up, I stayed right. to look for whoever. The house was about 10 to 15 minutes away. My dad also told me to get out of the car to look for whoever was crossing the street and to keep my doors locked. Yeah, it should have gone out in the car and kept the doors locked. When we hung up, I stayed in the car, nervously looking around every window, though not seeing much because of the pouring rain. I truly was so scared that I was about to piss my pants, knowing someone was out there, wondering if they intentionally ran in front of my car. I knowing that, keep the doors locked and... ...called our roadside assistance company, and they were sending a tow truck right away. About ten minutes passed since the phone call with my dad now, and I texted my dad, are you on your way yet? He texted back, yes. I had my hazards on, though I'm sure the car being ran into a tree would help enough in finding me. I turned to my right, as if I instinctively knew someone was there, and I jumped out of my seat and screamed at the top of my lungs as I Insane. felt like my heart dropped out of my body. There was a soaking wet man in white, looking into my car with his mouth hung open in an O shape, and his eyes squinted. He then put his hands on the glass and started to rub the windows. I didn't know what he was doing, but I yelled at him to go away. He started to try opening the locked door, and when it wouldn't open, he started to pound his fists on the glass. He did all of this with his mouth still hanging open in that weird O shape. I didn't know what to do other than call my dad again. Smart, smart girl, smart. He picked up and I basically cried into the phone that there was a random man trying to get into my car. My dad screamed into the phone not to open the doors and that he's almost here. He stayed on the line with me as the man outside started to hit the window with his elbow, causing me to scream and my dad to panic into the phone. See, like... Surprisingly, the glass didn't shatter. And as that glass is tough. If it didn't break on you hitting a tree, it, the dude's elbow isn't going to take it. My prayers were answered. I saw headlights approaching from down the road and pull up behind my car. The man outside looked to the other car, which happened to be my dad's. And as my dad stepped out of his car and charged at this creep, the creep tried to run away into the woods. But my dad tackled him, and I swear beat his face in to the point that his face would have been completely covered in blood if it Way to go, Dad. Way to go, Dad. Weren't for the heavy rain washing some of it away. He held the man down as I called the police. The tow truck driver arrived on That would have done that sooner, but scene first. And he was of course shocked at the unusual scenario he just pulled up to. Police showed up not long after that, and it was the most satisfying feeling seeing that man arrested. Not only was he charged criminally, but we pressed charges for the damages to my car. His name is Marcus Green. I never showed up to court. My father and our lawyer did. I didn't want to see that man ever again. The disturbing face he was making, along with seeing him striking my car to break in, is something that will stay with me for a long time. Yeah, yeah, good, good work, Dad. Showing up, kicking ass, holding him down, not killing him, because you know, that's something a lot of dads would have done. It would definitely have killed the guy. But, yeah. Yeah, like that that girl had better instincts than the other people. But that's it. That's all I have. That was Mr. Nightmares three scary true thunderstorm stories, which I do believe that they are true. That's it. I'll see you weird people later.